the thesis behind it is that woke, which seems to be a synonym, I think, for, for, for politically correct or, or, or a way of describing people who you feel strain too hard to be right on and to be fans of equality. You, you see them, I think you see them, and it's never quite clear how far into your cheek your tongue is when you're talking about things like vegan sausage rolls, but you do see them as a genuine threat. I, I wonder what they're a threat well, to. A threat to freedom of speech. Because I think that there's a... You're calling for them to be quiet. Well, there's a, look, first of all, by the original definition of woke, yes. I would happily sign up to being woke. If woke means just being aware of social and racial injustice, then I'm, I'm woke. That's not a problem. But that's not what the, the modern version of woke has become. It's become a very destructive, quite self-harming, sort of feeding frenzy based around this cancel culture. And I know you don't really buy into that, but I see it all the time where... People are getting more and more cowed about feeling they just can't express an opinion or have a haircut or wear certain culturally inappropriate outfits or, you know, laugh at a certain... But, but, but are they really? Are they... Whatever it may be. And yeah. I, just feel like it's, I feel it's self-harming. I don't feel that taking things to that degree brings anybody with you. And if you want to win an argument, you've got to bring people with you. But But the argument for me... I, and trans is an exception to this observation because I think that trans issues are very confusing and people scream at each other with, with, a, with a fury of certainty that I can't achieve that, anything like that level. Do you certainty. think that's why I do everything? No, no, I really don't. I think, I think trans yeah. is, is very right. much the exception. And in fact, it's, a, it's, it's people who are possessed of really toxic and dangerous views regarding race or religion or um, ethnicity or sexuality. I think they, they're desperate. For, for trans to be front and center because then they can claim there's a culture war but actually it, a lot of your arguments work in the context of trans they don't work in the context of of racism or, or religious bigotry um but well, they, they what, do if you start making a mockery well that's what i'm running to issue. yes but that that's that's what i don't get because all i know of these great battles are what i'm told by media outlets that are literally primed to infuriate and enrage me and i, thought, I, follow, I followed you on that and what i would say to you is you, you think that they're sort of conflated, they're concocted, they're created by the media, but it wasn't the media that said, for example, that Royal Britannia should be chopped from the prompt. It was actually, the catalyst was not the media. It got brought to the media's attention, and the media then had a lot of, you know, think? hey, while the sun shone. But I do think it's chicken and the egg, isn't it? There's always oh. something there that starts think, the Okay, so name three people who in the public eye who passionately believe that we shouldn't have sung Land of Hope and Glory at the... And remember, it's an audience sing-along at an event with no audience. No, no, sure. It wasn't, doesn't need to be free. It just needs to be the person in charge of the production. Well, who had no, you're talking about an army of Wokies, and I can't Ooh. think of one person who, who, who person passionately believed power. it shouldn't happen. The person had the power to decide it wasn't going to be a big part of the problems, and then that became a catalyst. But there was no audience, Pierre. Yeah, but, here, but here's the point I would make to you. An audience sing-along at an event with no audience. Then bring somebody in and sing it. You could do that. Yes. I was definitely not in the current... And you can't name anyone who was passionately opposed to yes, it being sung. Yes, I remember I named the woman who was in charge of the proms. That was the point. Right. And look, you might think it's trivial, but I can tell you, the moment people heard that a quite woke person in charge of the proms had decided we weren't going to be able to sing Royal Britannia, all hell broke loose. But more well, important, of course it did. That's what I mean by the, the, the hang on, okay. More importantly for the left and for the Wokies, what did it actually achieve? In the end, they do a U-turn, as everybody knew they would. So they don't win. They just have a completely futile war, which is guaranteed to ensure they don't get what they want to get. When that was the last woke candidate in an election who won? Anything. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm still not entirely well, sure what you mean by woke. And, and we can, hopefully we can use myself as an example on this. But, but for me, the fact that there was no audience there simply meant that they were changing the, the, the way that the event unfolded. The Times, I think, or the Sunday Times got hold of it, turned it into a story. The number of stories you see now about Black Lives Matter are responsible for this review, there's no such thing. Can you name someone who is what you could call a member of Black Lives Matter? And yet every story I read about Nelson being reassessed or statues being 
protected. They're, they're, I just don't know who these people are. And I sit in newsrooms, and I'm sure you still do too. And I hear people desperately ringing around to try to find someone to represent what you describe as an army. If there's so oh, many well, of them, why are they so hard to find? I don't think you need to find anybody. When you have to board up Winston Churchill, Gandhi and Mandela statues, in Parliament Square. But they did that during the Countryside Alliance march. Of course, of course. I'm not... Listen, well, the, right, woke? the right wing can behave far worse than the left wing. Let's just the right real. wing, they're just country people they're are right, just pointing out when there's the a right. big event. They probably well, boarded up those statues when you were having your big anti-Iraq war march. Yes, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone's not culpable. I'm not saying I'm not culpable or part of this frenzy and noise. But what I am saying is the illiberal liberal element of wokedom has got completely out of hand. You might not accept it, but go out and ask people, are you sick and tired of this stuff? And they'll tell you they are. Well, of course they will, because so much effort, it's like Brexit, so much effort has been put into telling people that there's an enemy at the gate. No one's bothered to check whether there actually is. So off the top of your head, who has been cancelled in, in the United Kingdom? What do you mean, who's been cancelled? Well, it's a word you use a lot. You say that J James O'Brien won't be cancelled because he's got such a big platform. Well, you have. You're not going to get cancelled. Well, so what who about has been? I can't remember the name of the author who got cancelled by... You're the going to have to do better than that. Because you, you say J James O'Brien will not be cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, but I know loads of people who have been. So just name yeah. a few. OK, well, I can think of one immediately, which is a good example. And actually, you, you ought to be furious about it. Go and on. It, it was the author. I don't know her name. She's oh, not well, then it's hardly a massive issue if you can't even remember her name. It's a massive issue. Okay. So the author whose name you can't remember, what does she do? By a publisher, because the woke staff of the publisher, and I can do, there are myriad examples in the book. Like but this will be trans, won't it? It won't be any other issue. It will be trans. Yes, because that's, that's the only trans thing that works. Because you happen to agree with it. I don't. I don't have a view on trans. I write in my you new book about how I can't pick a side. As so, I say so, in the book, you do have a view on trans, and the moment you expressed your view on trans, they tried to cancel you. No, and let me explain why you got that horribly wrong, if I may. So this oh, is... I'm looking forward to this. This is this, well, what I tweeted as, as you, and I'm very flattered that there's so many pages dedicated... I was very really flattered about you. To, to, don't you what? You're always very nice. Um, but, but, I mean, two things I'd pick up first. James O'Brien, who, who, a popular and successful radio presenter, that's fairly uncontroversial. Um, <laughs> it, it never crosses O'Brien's mind that he might not be right or that anyone who disagrees with him might not automatically be a vile bigot. Um, how to be right, which I don't think you've read, is the polar opposite of that. On every page, I'm oh, I know, I know what you claim to be. I, no, but no, I no, no, it's my read, book that you've mentioned. Shall I tell you what's in it? it? There's no relation to any of that. Well, let you let are, me tell you what's I in my book. You can be very self-righteous. You well, do you, you say that according to Twitter, but my book is about how what? easy it is to persuade good, decent, non-bigoted, intelligent, fully functioning people of things that aren't true. And then I go through 10 different issues, everything from Winterval, which was, was a myth, right through to the, the controls we did and didn't have over immigration, to the meaning of political correctness. And on every single page, or certainly after every single transcript, I say, this is a good person. This is not a stupid person. And yet, under your reading, everyone who disagrees with me must automatically be a vile bigot. Nobody could read your Twitter feed without drawing the hourly conclusion that you think anybody that voted Brexit, it must be a total moron. Because no, that's simply not I true. Otherwise, Every single, my best friend voted Brexit. My father-in-law voted Brexit. There's, I mean, this is where I'm wasting my breath because you're saying things that are simply not true to support your thesis. So let's park that and move on to this example so that you use. Once again, you think you're right and you won't countenance. But no, I, I, I think I'm right about who I am, Piers, and what I wrote in my I book. I question who you are in the same way you're questioning who I am. OK, well, I'm right about what's in my book that I wrote <laughs> and that you haven't read. But on the transgender thing, before you... Why would you so even far, put it in there if you haven't read it? Before you move on so fast on the transgender thing, explain... No, I'm not moving on. I'm coming right to it now. That's I absolutely where we are. So what I... I, I was under... I forgot I, I was under um, uh, scrutiny or criticism from people who would be described perhaps as anti-trans or, or TERFs, and that they were asking me, oh, I wish I could ask him what it's like to be a woman. Mm -hmm. So I explained how confusing I find it all. And there's a chapter on this in my book as well, which would have helped you perhaps understand what I was doing on this occasion. And I said, I don't think uh, it's unreasonable to not let human beings with penises into changing rooms, mm -hmm. knowing that the response to that, because we've done it on the radio show, is always, well, who's going to check? And that's the point at which I say, Actually, I can simultaneously sustain two contradictory positions here because A, 
I don't think it's unreasonable to suggest that people with penises shouldn't be allowed into female changing rooms. B, I can't support any form of underpants police or, or, or genital examination before you're allowed into a changing room. And my friend Paris Lees, who, who you cite here as somehow attacking me or uh, turning, turning on me, well, she makes a brilliant point. She says, who's going to check the contents of my pants? So instead of thinking, crikey, that's a really good point, um, you, you saw it as evidence of wokeness. So first question would be, who is going to check the evidence of her pants? Well, these are the questions that have to be asked, aren't they? Well, and I answer them in my new book. Yeah. You don't in yours. So, so, I, so who, who should check the well, contents well, okay. of her pants? I, well, I, I don't know, is the answer. Right? But what I would say... But you do think that it's reasonable to suggest that people with penises shouldn't be allowed into female-only spaces? What, what, listen, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm saying when you say there's no such thing as cancel culture, look at the reaction you got. And I say to you, you can't name anyone, and if you can, it will only be about trans, not about I, all the other issues from vegan I, sausage rolls to Black Lives Matter. The example I was giving you before you so rudely interrupted me, uh -huh. was the, 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 the writer who got cancelled by her publisher because she retweeted a support for J.K. Rowling, who had similar views about the transgender issue, yes. and women's rights are being damaged by the trans rights lobby. And I have a lot of sympathy with a lot of what she says, not all of it, but most of it. And I do think at the very least, somebody as woke as J.K. Rowling should not end up with a hashtag, R.I.P. J.K. Rowling. That is the kind of illiberal fascism, which is the very thing that wokies claim that they detest most in genuine fascists. But you keep saying wokies, and I keep saying this only works on the trans issue. So give because me some examples from other areas. Who's been cancelled? Who's been cancelled from the trans issue? Oh, no, I, that, you, I've read your book. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Go Radical on. feminists who want James Bond to be a woman. Right. Why do you care? I care because James Bond's a man. Did you see Glenda Jackson's King Lear? Yes. What did you think of it? It's got nothing to do with James Bond. It's got quite a lot to do with gender. It's got quite a lot to do with gender. I've got no problem with a woman spy being a hero. I mean, I mean, and here, okay, here's another example. All Tringham, yes. school, all Tringham School for Girls yes. told all their staff they could no longer use the word girl. And yet the name of the school remains All Tringham School for Girls. And yes. what about the girls' right to be called a girl at that school, given 99% of the kids there are girls? Google. How many of them have you asked? Let me finish a little. You wanted some examples. I don't know, I do, but, but let's examine them one by one. How many of the girls at Altrincham School for Girls have you asked about how they felt about this? We had a lot of people. Because it probably did, came from the pupils. Contacted from the, well, hang on. A lot of people from the school contacting us saying it's utterly ridiculous. And what about, they said, why is it that the transgender right, which is just a tiny minority of students, trans were again. Able to, well, hang on, were able to dictate how everybody got called in the school? But because I'm agreeing with you that when it, when it comes to trans, there is a tension and a confusion and an unresolved um, uh, animosity between two very, very furiously entrenched camps. But there isn't on anything else. And you, you've basically written a whole book. I haven't finished yet. Oh, sorry. Google react to radical vegans screaming away by removing the egg from their salad emoji. So what? What about my rights as somebody who loves eggs Yes. To have the egg in the emoji. Why does a radical vegan get to have it removed when I, like most people in this country, love eggs? Yes. Have you found your access to eggs in any way limited? Uh, only in when I when I click on Google and look no, at the. No, your access to, to actual eggs rather than My cartoon representations is, of them. My point is the radical divisions of all these things. And there are much more no, serious. But you can't you can't say the radical divisions of all I these can. things when you've conflated transgender with a cartoon of an egg i haven't i've just told you different examples you said you're only talking about trans because that's the I'm only trans. thing that works I'm nobody is cross trans. about an egg I'm emoji trans. nobody's cross about that and you're not really of course they're cross about it or it wouldn't an have been emoji. an emoji of an egg of course right yeah, people weren't cross do you, about do you it. understand why i said i can't tell how how much time you spend with your tongue in your cheek i mean hand on heart you're really cross that Google removed an egg from their salad emoji. No, hand on her on the more serious point. Yes, I, as long as it's I, not trans. Yes, okay. You, you can pick any subject you like. Hand on her, my issue with it all, collectively, is that this kind of nonsense, what it drives is a sense of ongoing, all-encompassing censorship, 
where companies in particular are now bowing to pressure from the woke brigade to virtue signal their way to a place that I find hellish, where people are being dictated to about every single part of their lives. And most of it is trivial, as you rightly observe, but it's the, it's the fact it happens on trivial stuff that A, distracts from the bigger picture, and B, drives people completely nuts and makes them think that they have no ability to have any freedom of speech or expression. And I think that is legitimately a really serious issue. But, but you don't think people should be allowed to say it would be great if James Bond was played by a woman? That's freedom of speech. Not if it happens. Why not? Because James Bond's a man. Yeah, a, a fictional man. He's a man. He was he's, he's, he's a man. not real. He's no, a man. man. So you're real. happy for James Bond to be a woman, are you? I, I, well, I, I, hand on heart, I could not give a fig, mate. Okay, I just if it's a good, I, do you know what I'd do? I'd go to the cinema and decide whether it was a good film or not. You have things that you care about. I have things that I care about. But I don't. I, this is why I like you so much because I, I think you really do care about this, and it is. You must, on some level, realize how ridiculous it is, and that's why I have a problem with your book because because the trans issue is profoundly important, and I write very. Uh, great length and very in great detail about it in both the book um, I published a couple of years ago that you haven't read and the book that comes out next week and and and, and there's I a huge you about your books if I did I'd read them there's a huge danger of conflating cartoon eggs with young people who feel they've been born into the wrong body and, Not, and no, you, only because you decided that that's the one issue that matters no I gave you a lot of space to list all the great crimes against all the great crimes committed by Wokies if and, you and you've come up with James Bond and a cartoon egg mate go through the more serious things in the book well, what are the more serious things well let's talk book, about apart racism. from trans let's talk about racism and the reaction to George well, Floyd's well, and the ridiculous way it went away from being a battle for racial equality and racial justice into utter ridiculousness about anything that anybody in the world on the woke side decided was racist and had to be cancelled. For example? I ended up focusing on rural Britannia, faulty towers, statues were being destroyed all over America of famous presidents, uh, with the most tenuous links in some cases to slavery. Over here, Winston Churchill being boarded up and Mandela being boarded up. Yeah, but we're back oh, there again, they always the board them up. completely crazy because and and the and the damage is done to the actual cause. I hear you. I don't buy it, but you're. I think you're sincere. I mean, okay. So, final question: Can you name any major public figures who, who think that statues of Winston Churchill should be taken down? Yes. Go on. Interviewed him on the show. Who? Uh, Kehinde Andrews, the professor from Hawaii. He, 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 he is the guy that every producer in the country will tell you, and we can't find anybody to pursue this point. That's the person we call. And I did say public figures. The Winston Churchill statue was defaced. It was yes, up. by an idiot student. I sometimes think if you'd been to university, you'd realise that idiot students have been around forever and giving them this level of profile and importance and treating them as if they're a threat to civilization as we know it is their dream come true, Piers. There are lots of people who think that Winston Churchill is the problem when it comes to the race debate. To which I say, actually, he got rid of the worst but, pieces ever. But there, there aren't, aren't though. There, there might there might be some dozy undergraduates who've who've read the wrong books and haven't actually grown up yet. But my attitude would always be, oh bless them, they'll, they'll grow out of it. Yours is, oh my God, they're destroying civilization as we know it, and we must you stop realize, them now. You realise that when I wrote the book, yes, people like you were the people I really wanted to read it. Yes. Because I knew you'd react like this. But, but I'm not. I'm reacting with you great you're reacting affect, with affection normal. and I'm amusement. Right. No, I, seriously, I, I, I promise you, I, I'm, not, I'm never going to look at a I'm never going to look at a cartoon egg in the same way. I'm not outraged, but just because you use me as an example, I, I, I didn't recognise your account. Not least because um, Paris Lee's remains a very good friend of mine, and she made an extremely good point about the underpants police. So I, I, I couldn't work out whether or not I'm being held up as an example of being woke or a victim of cancel culture. Uh, I think you were an ironic victim of cancel culture, which you don't think exists. Yes, I'm except giving, on trans issues. Well, I was giving an example where on trans issues, which is the only issue you seem to care about. No, well, I care about it more than eggs. Uh, forgive me. Cartoon yes. eggs. Yeah, but well, you only care about things that you care about. And Nonsense. You I care about equality and decency show, and, 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 and honesty and integrity and one accountability. One your, your shtick is yeah. to be blindly partisan about an issue. It and so isn't. And by the way, you do it very well. No, but I don't do that at all. 
you will never why do you have to do this you've, there's lots of things you can criticize me for without making stuff up you've made up stuff in the book you don't have to make up stuff here what stuff have i made up in the book i love being wrong well you said that everybody who doesn't agree with me i consider to be an uneducated bigot whereas the book you're actually referring to when you say that is full of I explanations read, i read your twitter feed well my twitter day. feed honestly mate every day life's too but, short but, Permanently. We're, we're not, do you know what we've done? We're not going to have any time to talk about Trump. So the three areas, my the three areas on my Twitter feed, the three areas upon which you've, you've historically sought to lock horns with me were the utter, um, the, the way that Donald Trump's depravity outside the White House would make it absolutely clear to anybody honest how completely dangerous he would be inside the White House, that the Brexit that people voted for was absolutely impossible to deliver, and that Boris Johnson was supremely unfit for office. What did I get wrong? Well, you're always right about everything. You know? No, no, just on those three issues, which are the only things you've ever tweeted. The thing me about. you got wrong is that you refused to accept the result of the referendum. No, no I didn't. That's really? not what I asked you. you I said that the people weren't going to get the Brexit that they voted for. Of They're not, are they? Of course not. But I... I so you agree I, with me? Of course, you know I agree with you about Brexit. And Trump? Trump, as you know, I've known him a long time. I see good and bad in him. And I think he may lose the election for all the bad side of him coming to the fore. But I don't see him as bad as you do. But I don't see him as good as he sees himself. And uh, Boris Johnson's fitness for office? Boris Johnson's turned out to be an absolute clinker.